guys! So this week we are talking about YouTube and how we got into YouTube and stuff. Um, I'm feeling quite a lot of pressure actually because I've just watched Sarah's video and she said that she was intrigued to see how I got into loads of the people I got into because I kind of then in turn got her into them but I don't really remember for a lot of them so yeah. I think I remember my first Charlie is so cool like video because we were in the same year at school, we're the same age so his GCSEs came out the same day as me and I'm pretty sure the first video I watched of his, although not 100% sure, was him opening his GCSE results. I remember just thinking I could not do that and he got a B in something and I remember him trying to like act like it was fine but you could tell that he was like shit. I think that also probably proves we went to the same sort of school where a B at GCSE is like oh my god I failed. So yeah, I think that was the first Charlie So Cool Like video I watched and it was probably like featured on the front page. It's probably how I found a lot of my favourite YouTubers was when they were featured or if they were top viewed, that's probably how I found What The Buck as well. Because it used to be really, really easy to go onto YouTube and go onto the top viewed page and just find out what other people were watching and watch things like that. So I imagine that's how I find Michael Buckley. Tyler Oakley, I remember really, really clearly how I started watching him. The first video I watched of his was the Why Gay Marriage is Wrong video, which was featured on the front page. And I think I clicked on it like, oh my god, I'm so ready to be angry at this person. But obviously it was a joke, because everyone knows Tyler now. Back then he wasn't particularly big. And I fell in love with him, and I think I watched back all his videos and haven't missed a video since. So that was Charlie's first video was about six, seven years ago. Tyler's was six years ago, I think. Coming up this May, it'll be six years, which is crazy. So I've been watching Tyler Oakley for six years. That's insane. And the progress he's had and the way he's just kind of exploded in the past year or so is crazy, but also makes me really happy. No one deserves success more. Through Tyler I then watched The Five Awesome Gays, which is how I found Joseph Birdsong, who's another one of my favourite YouTubers. He's less well known, and I guess there's no way to really discover YouTubers these days unless they collab or whatever. So I'm going to link his channel below so that all you guys can watch and fall in love with him too. So he was on Five Awesome Gays with Tyler. I used to watch a lot of collab channels back in the day. So from Charlie I got into Five Awesome Guys. I also watched Five Awesome Girls. I still watch Christina Horner and all her videos. And Aunt Lee, she does a book club thing. They've just started a book club this year with Joseph Birdsong. And that I'm enjoying as well. It's just started. Two of the three books they're doing, actually, though, I have read already. So... That's probably bodes well because it means that books they do later will be books that are my sort of taste, so yay. And it's still interesting seeing what other people think about books you've read. So they're two YouTubers, I remember clearly how I started watching them, but others I don't really remember. Sarah mentioned that Michael Buckley replied to an email I sent him for the school newspaper, which was a massive thing. He really was a big deal and he wasn't the only YouTuber I emailed. And I remember the people who I emailed who didn't reply, they didn't even acknowledge my email whereas he replied really really quickly and was like here are the answers to the questions so I wrote this whole article back in lower six so it was about 2007 eight time and he was really so gracious so kind and he's such a lovely guy generally you can tell that from his videos his twitter everything and I obviously wish him the best success and I'm really glad that he's stuck with the YouTube thing. There are people I used to watch who just stopped making videos and the person who really came to my mind was someone who was called Cute with Chris back in the day and he was basically like a really sarky guy who hated everything except cute animals and there'd be kind of just cute pictures of cute animals. He had a talking horse. I'm going to link to his channel. When I searched him on YouTube it was really sad because it said last active four years ago and I was like that's so depressing. He used to be one of my favourite YouTubers but other people have kind of faded away. It's just sad. People who have kept posting videos, although maybe more sporadically that I still love. Community Channel, who I've been watching for a few years. Vlogbrothers. I really don't remember how I got into the Vlogbrothers, which is weird. But I think it was my first year of uni. So 2009, I think. And I don't know how I found them. I probably just heard a lot about them and thought, okay, well I should look at what these guys are up to. And then I read every John Green book. I got crazy into them. And the rest, as they say, is history. So... I'm glad that I found them however I did find them. I wanted to mention actually my first ever YouTube video that I watched was a fan made trailer for Titanic 2 that cut together loads of other Leonardo DiCaprio Kate Winslet films to make a trailer for a second Titanic film and it was so realistic that all my friends and I watched it in an IT lesson at school and I remember then we were like what is this YouTube thing? So yeah I mean it wasn't like viral videos didn't exist because I'm sure you guys all remember the llama song if you don't search it on YouTube I'm sure it's there now but it was crazy that this whole website existed 
and I guess it took over really, really quickly because I think that was GCSEs and clearly by the end of GCSEs I was watching YouTubers. Videos that I watch nowadays, still obviously Tyler, Joseph Birdsong. I also absolutely love Dan Is Not On Fire and Sarah mentioned him as well. I don't know how I found him. I don't know. Watching him sometimes is like watching all my weird traits on camera. So it's both comforting and disturbing, but is that what YouTube is? Maybe that's what YouTube is generally. Jack's Gap. I know what Sarah's talking about with the rickshaw run stuff, and I guess I kind of have the same, but Finn Finn the better twin is what I'm going to say on that. I'm not going to go into it. Vsauce I really enjoy, so that's a short education type thing, and it's really fun. The videos are normally about 10 minutes long on a particular topic, and I find them really interesting. The topic goes from science to language, all these different things. Um, sociology I guess. That's interesting. I do enjoy watching when I have more time the educational videos that YouTube has to offer. Although my favourites are still the complete weirdos like Tyler Oakley and Joseph Birdsong, Dan is on fire, amazing Phil. All, all those guys, Troy Sivan. I, I guess I'm quite a stereotypical viewer of that group of YouTubers. But like Sarah was saying, it used to be a time when you could look and you would know every single YouTuber. You'd look at the top subscribe, you'd be like, I know all of them. Whereas nowadays I come across these YouTubers who I have never heard of, but clearly have a massive fan base. They're just not in the group of people that I watch. So it has really changed. I do miss the days when it was really easy to go and see what the most viewed videos were on that day. And that is how you found a lot of things out. But I guess it's just a whole different world now and the most viewed videos might not actually say that much about what's the most popular. They're probably going to be mostly music videos and TV show things. So times change, I guess. And YouTube has really changed, but I still really enjoy it. I still think there's a community. It's just a lot of different communities. So I think, I imagine if I emailed what the but now and he saw it, he would take the time to reply. I think there are quite a few YouTubers who would. It's just obviously that a lot more people are trying to message them and get in touch with them so it's harder for them and I understand that and I guess I was lucky that even though Michael Buckley was one of the biggest YouTubers it didn't mean what it meant today so he still could take the time to reply to that email very very quickly with good answers that I could use. I can't find the article which is really annoying if I ever find it I'll I know, post it on my blog or something it's obviously not great it's like 16 year old me writing but I don't know I must have a copy somewhere or someone I know must do so I might try and track it down so I guess I was into YouTube really seriously then that I thought I would write an article about it in my school newspaper and it was about the community of YouTube and I think there is still a community it's just changing crazily. I guess it's going from kind of small town to cosmopolitan massive city is the difference. So there are still small communities but it's obviously not the same as one big community. I don't think I have anything else to say particularly. I've probably forgotten a whole load of YouTubers I love but I should go to work now because I'm filming this before work because I thought this natural light thing that people talk about I might try and grab some of that in the morning. So yeah! I will see you guys all next week and I look forward to hearing Sophie and Rachel's thoughts on YouTube and until then, bye!